Hey, hi guys, in this video I will test out the latest of the compact cinema cameras alongside each other. I'm gonna do various tests so we can all see the strengths and weaknesses of each of these cameras. Every year I like to test out the latest cameras to see for myself what tools are available for my work. I don't necessarily do this to see which camera is the best. Uh, honestly, these days pretty much all the cameras can produce amazing images. Uh, so you can create amazing work with whatever camera you will really have access to and you shouldn't ever use uh, your camera choice as an excuse for bad work. Uh, now, of course, some cameras are better suited for a certain type of work while others are better for a different workflow. Uh, so I'm curious to find out not just how the final image looks, uh, but how the cameras handle, uh, how fast I can work with them, swap out the lenses, change camera settings and so on. Uh, by the way, today's video is sponsored by Storyblacks. Uh, they offer a wide selection of stock footage that can help you actually finish your scene, uh, even if you're not able to, let's say, travel to other countries or another place uh, right now, uh, but you want to make it look like your film is set in a different location. Uh, for example, in my camera test today, uh, one of the scenes we set up was supposed to sort of look like we're at a coffee shop and not actually in a driveway in front of a suburban home. So with the right angle, set dressing, and then also some stock footage cut into the scene, uh, you, as you can see, you can create this sort of illusion of being at a different location. Uh, Storyblocks actually has lots of different video and audio elements to choose from, uh, so you can always create the right scene. Uh, in fact, Storyblocks has an impressive collection of 4K stock footage. Uh, they also have graphics, sounds, and even music uh, that cover a wide range of topics. Uh, they also offer unlimited downloads. Plus, all the clips are royalty-free for both personal and professional use. So if you're working on a project where you might need some extra shots, graphics, or, or sounds, then definitely check out Storyblocks uh, using the link in the description of this video. Uh, so today for the test, I have five different cameras. Uh, two of them are Sony cameras, which are the Sony FX3 and the FX6. Uh, these are both full-frame cameras. The FX6, even though it's still a pretty small cinema camera, it's actually the largest cinema camera from all the ones that I'm testing out today. Uh, what I like about the FX6 is that it's almost, I would say, like a budget mini version of the Sony Venice cinema camera. Uh, the colors and the dynamic range are very similar. Uh, now, the FX3, while it's also an amazing full-frame camera, I don't know why Sony advertises it as a cinema camera, because basically it's the Sony a7S III, but without a fan built into it. Uh, this camera doesn't offer a variable or any type of uh, built-in ND filter, uh, like the FX6 does. Uh, it also doesn't allow you to even switch to a shutter angle like all proper cinema cameras do. Uh, so it feels still like it's a, a hybrid stills camera. Uh, that Sony just put on uh, with a new kind of body and rebranded it as a cinema camera uh, to try to basically sell more of the <laughs> Sony a7S III cameras. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I've used this camera before and it can produce amazing video. Uh, I just think it maybe should have been classified more as a hybrid stills and video camera instead of a cinema camera. Another thing that makes these two Sony cameras stand out from the rest is the fact that these are the only cameras I have today that have reliable autofocus. Uh, in fact, the AF is one of the best in the industry. So if you're doing a lot of live event work where you can't manually focus, then these are definitely the cameras you should look at. Uh, another full frame camera I have for the test today is the Zcam E2 F6. Uh, if you've watched my review of this camera, you'll know it's got a lot of amazing features for the price point. Also with the latest firmware upgrades and accessories that were released, uh, this camera has become even more powerful. It can record in various 12-bit RAW image formats as well as Apple ProRes and uh, H.265 in 10-bit. Uh, it can do 6K at 60 frames per second and 4K uh, resolutions at 120 frames per second. Uh, it has dual native ISO at 400 and uh, 2500. Uh, you can get a built-in variable ND filter plus interchangeable lens mounts. Uh, so you can use it with mirrorless lenses, Cinema PL glass or Canon EF. Uh, it's an overall, I would say, the most feature-packed cinema camera that I personally own and love using. Uh, we also have the Komodo Red Cinema Camera, which is a filmmaking tool that's been used on some of the biggest film productions. 
Uh, it uses the Super 35 image sensor with the global shatter, so there's no more jello effects or rolling shatter artifacts. Uh, it's also got a really beautiful 16 plus taps of dynamic range. It can shoot up to 6K in 40 frames per second, uh, 5K in 48, 4K in 60 frames per second, and 2K at 120 frames per second. Uh, and they always lovely to work with Red Code RAW, and also it can shoot an Apple ProRes codex. The last, but definitely not the least, is the newest addition from Blackmagic Design, uh, which is the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Uh, it brings the best features from the previous Pocket 6K model, and it adds a whole bunch of highly requested updates, such as a built-in ND filter, uh, better battery performance, and the upgraded Generation 5 color science. It also adds a brighter 5-inch LCD screen that tilts this time, and just like the older model, it still records beautiful 6K video at up to 50 frames per second and offers a dual native ISO of 400 and 3200. Now I will let you guys watch the various tests that I've shot with these cameras, uh, but I would ask you to also choose your favorite camera. So just let me know what your choice is by leaving a comment below.
right, so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, and uh, don't forget to let me know which camera is your favorite by leaving a comment. Uh, and also in the next video, I'm going to show you guys some more tests that I did with these cameras. Plus, I'm going to share uh, which camera you guys picked as the favorite. So uh, make sure you guys stay tuned by subscribing to my channel or joining my newsletter on my website at tomantosfilms.com. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.